exciting session today. We're going to be focusing a little bit on advanced color control. So there are a lot of different ways to get a little bit more of a refined and controlled color palette. There's a lot of experimentation and tuning to get any of these to work exactly the way that we want them to in each specific application. But we'll be going through coloring and kind of some different methods for getting the specific colors that we want using uh, different tools and different methods. And so we'll go through each of those. We're probably going to focus on just one application a day. I think it's probably useful to just show how each application works in context. So we'll do that. I'm going to bring out a control layer that it kind of already pre-baked. So we've got this here. It's kind of this like robot dude. And I mainly did this because it's a really easy one to imagine being colored. So we've got this like robot control layer. And I'm just going to use like the standard scribble control method. In this case, I'm really just kind of questioning how can we get different colors. And so I'm going to turn the seed off of random. And I'm going to just go in and do robot guardian defender of the universe metal armor and uh, cool plasma or uh, painterly style digital concept art, the pinnacle artistry. To start, let's see what we get with the default settings. As expected, as pretty common, anytime you're doing this kind of like futuristic defender of the universe, sci-fi action movie style, right? You're gonna get this like blue orange effect. And I think this is like probably derived from the late 2010s where every single movie seemed to have this like blue orange dynamic we don't want those colors we want something different right so how do we get control over this well technique one is to use a raster layer so we can we'll delete this out i'll create a raster layer so i'll do a quick you know white background and then turn this down real quick so i can see what we're doing here and we are going to maybe just brush in on the raster layer and I'm just basically painting where I want the body to be. I'm guiding the color a little bit. I'll probably leave the denoising strength pretty high. If I was bringing this in as a pre-colored render, that would work, right? That would serve as a good raster layer uh, because I'm just bringing in this control sketch, if you will. What I'm doing underneath is I'm kind of putting in the general shape of the body. I'm kind of biasing the color here. If there are certain elements that I want to have uh, colored a different way, let's say, for example, like a green power core here, and then maybe, you know, some like green tint on the visors and some of these other elements, you know, I can certainly do that and I'll add those in. And then I'm really relying on the denoising strength. So I'll turn this up pretty high, but not so high that we lose the color completely. I didn't turn the opacity up. And this all would be all the way up. So let's do that. So we'll turn down the denoising strength and see if we can get that kind of green core back in. Yeah, there we go. Bringing this back down. Now we've got, it's kind of like a pseudo Iron Man color coming through. This guy's kind of like looking like Iron Man. So we'll turn Iron Man into our negative prompt because we don't want to really pull any, any of those elements in. It does have this kind of like painterly outline that's happening which, you know, we could probably fix if we wanted to, but you get the idea. We're controlling the color through the raster layer, but it's always kind of like this balance of denoising strength when we're doing that. So we're going to talk about some other techniques that we can use. So I'm going to throw this away. I'm going to crop this real quick to the bounding box just so that we've got this like perfect layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this raster layer to a control layer. That's right. We have no raster layer here. I'm going to use a tile control net. The initial or maybe like core purpose of a tile control net is when it's at full strength, it replicates the image like 90%, right? It's like mostly some colors sometimes get a little bit off, but overall it's kind of like trying to replicate that it's a tile. It's basically almost like a stamp. The interesting piece is that when you use a tile control net, but decrease the weight, you can actually get kind of like a little bit more of a nudge towards certain colors, but without relying on a raster layer and applying that throughout the entire denoising process. So we'll play around with it. We'll see what we get at 0.35 and whether we need to turn it up or turn it down. We'll kind of iterate our way towards that. It isn't dictating the color. 
very clearly it's not because we're starting to get like this magenta and this blue. So I'm going to turn it up and just see what, what happens when we get a little bit closer up to that full strength. We don't really want full strength because that's not really going to work. What I've noticed is that this tile control net can sometimes bias towards this kind of like pink or magenta. Now, this is where the benefit of tile and the pro of tile is that you have this during the attention process, during the denoising cycle, you're able to apply this. Whereas like the raster layer, it the whole influence that a raster layer has is on the initial noise that gets passed through. And so at high denoising strengths, you're kind of like taking a little bit of a gamble. So the tile can help you nudge a raster layer in a certain direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this back down to a raster layer. We're gonna have both the raster layer and the tile. And I'm gonna turn the denoising strength up pretty high and keep the tile at a more reasonable, maybe like 0.45. And we'll kind of compare this. So I'll do it with the tile and I'll do it without the tile. And we'll kind of show like what it does and how it influences things. Might be a little too high. We might turn this down just a little bit like 0.45 okay so we've got that obviously like my outlines did influence it right so we'll take this and i'll pull that out to the side so we can just kind of keep that you can see where my inarticulate rough edges did bias the color of the generation it's kind of assuming that because i had that outside of the lines that that was intentional. And so it's driving that color through part of what tile does tile is kind of, and I think this is a good example. So I'm going to turn off the tile control net exact same settings and generation, but without the tile control net. And what we'll see is that the tile control net actually pushes it outside the lines because it's almost forcing that even more so during the generation process. If you have a very specific like coloring, you've done the work and it actually fits inside the lines, tile can be a very useful tool for driving the color in the generation. If you have the colors inside the lines, it actually might be super useful. Maybe the, the thing to do here is just do that. I'll fix this as best I can. Uh, we'll turn this up. So we'll turn that back on, I'll generate this and you'll see how just even that like small correction there will have fixed significant amount of this like bleed that was outside of the core body and shape of this robot guardian. So we'll take that and we'll take that out to compare. So you see how we've got a lot of cool color happening there. We're really driving the color home. We're not relying as much on the prompt for what our colors are going to be. We're really actually driving a lot of that in the tile. Obviously, pulling that tile down will have less of an effect. Pushing it up will have uh, more of an effect. But you'll also, again, notice that we had to have the raster layer there as well to make sure that the noise and the color matched up. Otherwise, we were getting kind of like purples with that tile. All of these things have to kind of like be working together in order to really give you that control. What we did here for this one, again, tile, control layer, and raster layer. Those three things were kind of being used in the generation process. We also had the denoising strength up at 0.9, and that's kind of how we got this. So if you had a lot more color variation, maybe we should just add in some color variation just to show the how the technique works. So let's say that we have some like blue highlights. So we'll do that one and see what we get with that color. So you can see the interplay of those colors as I drew at the highlights. You bring those in, it's kind of biasing those colors in a way. It's a cool technique. You gotta really kind of get the combination of raster layer and control layer right to balance those things. It's always gonna be a little bit of like a dance to try to balance the colors as it's going through. Because again, we're really relying on a lot of interpretation in kind of what these things are, how they fit with the prompt, how everything's gonna look. But you can see that as we drew that color out, we really did get some influence on different elements because it wasn't all one homogenous color. We can also do things like highlights. So we'll go down to the tile and we'll do maybe a white brush stroke with some transparency, be a little bit less transparency. Okay, now we're gonna try this one. And again, we're just like building up that color and some of the values a little bit just to nudge the color closer and closer our direction. This one is going to be interesting to see how it's shaped up versus our last one. Actually pretty similar in a lot of ways. 
So this is a little bit lighter on the side and a little bit darker. I don't think it like matched up exactly because again, it's not all inside the lines, but it had an influence, right? And I'm sure if we did even higher, like a white or a punchier color that drove that difference, we'd, we'd see even more. The next thing that I'm going to do is what I've done is I pulled in a lot of color palettes. And if you've got a familiarity with the tools that we have in the toolkit, you might have some notion of where we're going with this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these out as regional reference images. When you're doing something like this for color, you don't want to be on precise or that IP adapter plus mode. You want to pull it back down to just one of the other um, IP adapters. And you're going to want that to be on style only and maybe a lower weight. Maybe like we'll go with 0.5. What I'm going to do is maybe duplicate this just so I've got another regional guidance and I'll bring in another color palette. Let's see what's going to go with this. Maybe this other like darkish color. So I'm going to pull in these blues, greens, and yellows, and we'll do the kind of core body here with those and maybe the hands. And then we'll do this other kind of like blue, orange, auburn colors. I'm going to just change my mask so I can kind of see a different color there. And if I'm trying to like keep this straight in my head and kind of remember which one is which, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a color that is more close to the color that's in my reference image. And that's just for visual assistance. It's not like it's not going to affect anything by changing those colors. It's just so I remember which color is which and which I'm painting with. And so we're going to take that and we're going to generate. Now, this doesn't have a white background, so it is going to have just kind of like the full scene. We'll talk about how to manage that and we'll go through that color values thing. But really what I'm just trying to show you now is we can go in and kind of nudge things in certain directions with colors just using reference images. And so we've got our green, yellow, blue chest plate and arms, and then we have our orange, blue shoulders and helmet and legs. And so we can actually see it chose where it wanted to apply each of those colors. It kind of attempted to apply those in places that made sense. It's a fun way of playing around with it is giving it the freedom to pick and kind of saying like, you know, you have the freedom to pick from these colors, put them where they make the most sense. You can also do a very strict, here's one color. And now you're just like really guiding it towards one thing. So let's just, we'll save that and then do something real quick, a little hack here. Let's just pick a color. Let's pick like a bright red. And I'm going to right click, create from bounding box, new regional guidance. Okay. So we're going to go back down to our generation. And what I'm going to do now is maybe we will take the helmet and the shoulders off and we'll make those pure, max those up red. I'm going to just make the layer red again for visual assistance. So now we're going to generate with this and we'll see what our color change did here. Well, oh, yeah, we left the strength up at one on that. So that was a mistake. This is why you don't do that. <laughs> this is why you don't leave it at one. So we're going to, we're going to fix that. This is precise. This is precisely why we don't use precise and why we don't do style and composition and why we don't do all the way up. This is what you get if you don't do the settings correctly. So I'm going to bring those back down and we'll give ourselves another option. That's a little bit more on the rails. But that's, you can also see how powerful it is if you really just want to like directly paint color in. Kind of made it a little bit more orangey than red. So maybe we'll like amp this up and see if we can get it to be closer to what we want. But you can see where the strength is actually like applying it to more spots inside of the image. Pretty cool though. I like it. I like this like red, the red visor too. But you get the idea, like the color palette is being applied with some degree of freedom. The more we add it, or the higher the, the weight is, the more it's going to kind of force that in, in more places. The lower it is, the more freedom it has. If we bring this all the way down to, let's say like 0.35, this might be so low as to just like be a nudge towards red, kind of much less pronounced. It's more orangish, but it does bias it. You can kind of see the different spectrum there and really bad and then low and then kind of higher with the correct settings. Uh, so there's some like interesting stuff there. I think we had a lot of fun today. We'll see y'all later. Take care, everybody. Bye.